Hi, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 35. My name is Hannah and I am recording this crafty podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. Welcome everyone. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. I do post show notes on a blog uh, which you can find uh, by going to um, rosehipknitspodcast.blogspot.com and I think they are the sort of where to find me information that I need to give you. So I'm back. I am back in um, my home in Tasmania after being away for three and a half weeks. If you have watched before you know that I went to Sweden on rather short notice. I went back with my two girls, they're two years old and six years old. So I took them with me back to visit family and um, yes just um, it was three weeks filled of family time really and uh, the weather was beautiful and we had a nice a really nice time it was it was lovely so we got back earlier this week and i have slowly recovered it's taking a while um, but i am less tired now than a week ago and i'm starting to get back on track i think so a part of that is recording a podcast because that's something that I really enjoy doing when I'm uh, doing my normal week. So um, I'm very sorry if today I seem a bit off. I am of course um, a bit out of routine with the podcasting. So we'll see how we go. It will probably just be a bit of a shorter catch up. I'll show you a few things um, and we'll just see how we go. So with my uh, cup of chai tea, I am. Um, I hope to bring to you an enjoyable episode, and um, we'll talk about some knitting and other things. First, I'd like, of course, to say thank you to all of you for for tuning in and watching. Thank you for coming back, or thank you for checking the podcast out for the first time. It might be a little bit different today, and um, first of all, where I am is different. I'm actually inside um, our house. This is my little office area in our kitchen and uh, normally when I record I'm out in my studio. It has turned quite a bit colder here in Tasmania since I left to go to Sweden four weeks ago and um, I am slowly warming up but I'm still feeling quite cold and um, haven't really seen much of the sun for the last few days and the studio is quite cold so I will have to bring one of our heaters out there on a, on a sunny day it will be fine out there but um, today I just felt like I want to be inside where we have our heating so um, that's something that's a little bit different this time so thank you everyone for watching and I would also like to say a thank you to Caroline of Clothline Design. A while ago, she sent me a pattern for her new shawl design. And I have the pattern here. It's the Seed of Change. Seeds of Change pattern. And um, Caroline was very lovely and sent that to me. So. Um, that's something that I'd like to um, knit in not too long. Um, so yes, let's just catch up a little bit. Today I will show you some knitting that I finished just before leaving for Sweden. A few things that I worked on while in Sweden, some things that I've started. Many of my projects have just been sort of resting while I was away. I didn't bring too much, um, but I do have a little bit of um, knitting to show you. Um, I have not got back to dyeing yet, 
um, I do have a very small hand dyeing business um, on Etsy. Um, you can find it by looking for Rosehip Island on Etsy if you're interested to have a look. I did open the shop again when I returned, so there's a few things in there, but I have not added anything new. I did receive um, quite a bit of blank, um, well, of undyed uh, yarn bases before I left, so I do have um, some things to, to dye up. I have some custom orders that I'm planning to um, get stuck into fairly soon. So we'll talk about knitting. I did purchase only a couple of things when I was away, so I might show you that towards the end if there's time. Uh, I'm not planning to make this a very long episode. I just wanted to get back in the swing of things and um, talk to you because I've, I've missed this. I have my show notes down here, so that's why uh, I keep looking down there. Maybe I, I felt like I needed a bit more guidance today than I normally have because it's the first time in a while. Also today, I, I plan to talk about Stash Dash and what I'm planning to do for Stash Dash. So I'll do that after I show you what I have been working on. So first up, I have my big cuddly bunny, a pattern by Pearl Soho. You saw this in the last episode, I was working on it. I made this entirely out of my hand spun and there's a few different breeds and, and colours in here and I can't remember this is some sort of long wool and then I mixed that up with some of my hand dyed Corridale moved on to a different breed <clears throat> of grey and mixed that up as well ran out of the teal coloured Corridale and continued with another breed of grey so this three different greys in here, all different breeds and plus the hand dyed Corridale. I did give the um, eyes and a nose, very, not very easy to see because they're also grey. Um, it's quite large <laughs> and uh, it's soft and squishy but the hand spun is not very soft and cuddly. It did get some some um, not use. It has been played with a little bit is what I, I meant to say. But I'm happy I finished that and I'm, I'm really really pleased to have these oh, it must be like six games of hand spun out of, out of my stash. That's just really nice that they're actually used for something. So this is almost like a little pillow. A cushion, cushion I guess. So I did finish that before I left and then I brought this shawl with me to Sweden because it was a shawl that I did for the Foxy Adventure Cow for the Foxes and Socks podcast. <laughs> so the Foxy Adventure Cow was, it still goes on for a couple of days but it's basically until the end of May. It's a cow where um, there were four different um, parameters or five different things that you could have drawn for that would determine what project you would do for the cow. So my five things, and I've talked about this before and I might mess it up now because it was a while ago that I thought about it, but my five things were to knit a shawl it was to include a variegated yarn, yellow yarn, and they can of course be the same yarn or two different ones, a worsted weight yarn, and it was meant to have colour work. So I did not use a specific pattern. I did look um, in the search engine in Ravelry for a shawl worsted colour work, and my results were a lot of the results Ravelry gave me were a lot of striped shawls, so I thought I'll just do my own striped shawl. And I had this hand spun um, that has yellow in it, and I thought um, that will work. And then I used just a, um, it's a Cleck Heaton Merino, I think, um, this sort of purpley burgundy colour. 
So I striped those two, just a very simple shawl. Took that to Sweden to finish it. And um, when I sort of I was out of the hand spun, I felt like it needed a bit of a border or needed some sort of finishing down here. And I looked through my mum's stash and she had a skein, it's just a 50 gram skein of some, I think it was a Jet, Peyton's Jet, which is, I think, an alpaca wool mix. And it was a skein that she dyed when she was here with me, visiting. And it's this one here, and it has pinks and blues, um, purples, and some yellow in there. So I thought I'll just use that as a bit of a finishing a bit of a border and that would also again add um, a variegated with yellow in it um, it's very um, it's quite a large shawl it's not it's very wingspan is very long but it's not very deep but it's because it's worsted weight it feels it's quite big but it's um, definitely very soft and in Sweden, I used it quite a bit, and I have used it since I got back as well. Um, I used it a bit because when it's cold, but it's not necessarily cold enough to wear a jacket, it's just really good um, just to cover you up a bit and feel nice and warm and snuggly. And um, sorry, even here in Australia, since I got back, I've been wearing it inside. It's almost like a blanket over my shoulder sometimes when I've been feeling cold. So that's um, the second thing that I finished. And as I mentioned earlier, I did not bring many of my works in progress to Sweden. So I um, haven't really worked on any of them. The only thing that I have worked just a tiny little bit on are my simple sky socks and they're only a tiny bit further along than what they were when I showed them to you last time so this is a sock yarn um, dyed by Erin of Holland Handmade so I have not really got very much further on those Um, the big thing that I brought with me to Sweden was a shawl that I had, um, I had signed up for to test knit for Meg, Meg Gatsby of Atelier Yarn and Design, and um, I, it's a shawl. It's called a veranda shawl, and she, Meg, has used the white gum wool four ply for it, and the white gum wool four ply is one of the bases that I use for my hand dyed yarn. And um, I wanted to dye up um, some spe specific colorways for my shawl. It's a shawl that uses two colors. So I did quite a bit of, of dyeing to get the right colors and colors that would go well together in this shawl. And I'm actually, I have actually been working on it now, so I have it out. And I'm, I've almost used the entire skein of my first colour and started on my second one so you can't really see them in the skein um, so I've started I'm more than halfway through but it's a large shawl because it uses two skeins of the white gum wool four ply and they are almost 500 meters each so this first section here I have used my thunderstorm colorway which is sort of it's a gray um, darker and lighter grey in it and then I have started on a slip stitch section where I used a thunderstorm and my party girl colourway and it's, it's not showing very well here I think because of how the light is coming in through the window I'm only using the natural light from the windows today but that's that one and this is what it looks like in the skein so it has um, purples and pinks and a tiny bit of blue in there as well so that's what I'm using as my second color and once I run out of the gray thunderstorm I don't have this much left um, 
there will be a section using only the, the second colour. So yes, it's huge. Absolutely huge and it's so soft and squishy. This is what I mainly was working on in Sweden and everyone who saw me knitting on it and felt it would say, whoa, that is so nice and soft. It is just um, a beautiful yarn. So that's that one. I am meant to finish this by the end of May, so I do not have many days left. I am hoping I can do it, but I might have to send Meg a message saying that um, uh, it will be almost done, but maybe not quite. Because the rows are quite long now. So that's that one. I'm doing it in a 4mm needle, my higher highs which I really like, and you would know that if you have watched the podcast before. And then, I did cast on a new thing while I was away. Um, we spent a lot of time outside in the garden. My family has um, an allotment, and not an allotment in... I think allotment started with just being basically a veggie patch, like a place where you have a bit of land to grow your vegetables. If you lived in an apartment or had a smaller home, I guess. Um, in the town where I'm from, in Sweden, there are a lot of allotment areas, and they're almost some of them are almost like little summer houses. Um, it's very basic houses. They are very basic houses on the little allotment um, plot, and they only have water part of the year. So it's only during the warmer month of the year that they have the water turned on. Many of them don't have electricity. They don't have um, plumbing for toilets. So there's outhouses, and it's very basic. They have a restriction on how large the buildings can be. I think it's only 50 square meters that they can be. But some people have um, built nice houses within those restrictions so they can stay there for most of the summer. And um, they have really nice gardens. And Yes, so um, my family has one of these allotments and the house is not, well, it's been worked on, but it's not like a real proper place to stay. But the garden is really nice and the weather was so nice, so we spent a lot of time there so the girls could have a play in the garden, play in the swing, run around in the grass and um, yes, just have a nice time outside. And um, I ended up there one time and it was a time, a rare opportunity where I could just sit down and do something. The girls were happy and um, I did not have any knitting with me. And close by to the allotment, there's a sort of grocery shop. Not a large supermarket, but it's a shop. It's part of a chain. And um, I went there to, to get something and I saw that they had some sock yarn. And I did. I, I got a couple of skeins because I thought, oh, well, maybe I can't start on it now, but at least, um, you know, it was very inexpensive and they looked okay, so I got a couple of skeins. And when I got back to the allotment, mum was there and she said, oh, I think I have some um, knitting needles in my bag, so I'll have a look and if I do, you could start working on something. And she did find some short DPNs in a two millimeter size and um, I was able to start on a sock. And the sock yarns I got were these two colours. So I only got 50 grams of each. And I got them at the Swedish shop Netto. Netto. And if you have watched the podcast Show My Lin with Maya in Jönköping, Sweden, I think she has used this yarn before. So this is what the label looks like. Strumpegan, Christina. So that's sock yarn. So it's 75% wool, 25% polyamide, 
and it's 210 meters per 50 gram. So I got those two and I started knitting using my mum's knitting needles. And I continued using them for a while and then I, I struggled with the short knitting needles. Every time I put a, knit the socks down that I was working on, the stitches would come off. And I know you can have special end protectors and everything, but the socks for me were just something that I could pick up, knit on a little bit and put them down without spending any time on fiddling around. So I changed to a circular needle, I think. Yes, I did. And continued on that. And then I swapped to another circular needle when I was going back home so mum could have her circular needle back. Oh yes, I remember now. Sorry. So first I used the short EPNs, then I used the very small circular knitting needle um, that mum had one of. And then when I was returning to Sweden, uh, to Australia, sorry, I, um, I didn't want to take her needles with me, but she had a just a wooden circular needle or bamboo uh, that I guess she's not using very much. So I used that just to put the sock on while we were flying back. And when we got back, I started using my own Addy circular needle because that's the only one I have in a two millimeter. And just the other day, I finished the sock. So this is the sock. Sorry, I've been talking a lot about not without even showing anything. So I did this cuff down and I started with the one colorway and then did the whole sock in one colorway, put in an afterthought heel and just did a toe exactly the way I did the heel. And I'm not too happy with these socks, they're okay, but the stitch definition is just really loose, especially down here. And I thought that it would be, I don't know if it's the different needles I've used. So here are the short EPNs, and then there's the circular, short circular needle, and then the larger on magic loop circular needle. And they just seem to go looser and looser in tension. Um, they're okay though. Um, I will definitely use them. The afterthought heel did not I have a big gaping hole here, but I will fix that up. So it was really good for just on the go knitting. I did um, knit a bit on them when I was visiting my grandmother in the hospital, and I did knit on them a bit when we were in the allotment, so that was good. And just yesterday, I cast on the second one. So I've just done a little cuff and I've started on the second color there. And I'm using my extremely long Addy circular needle, a two millimeter. And it's a bit ridiculous, but I think I'll manage. I, well, after finishing this sock, I thought, oh, maybe I don't have enough left to do one the same. But when I weighed what I had left, it was actually 30 grams. So if my scales are accurate, I only used 20 grams of the blue and then plus some of the red colorway. So hopefully that's accurate and I will have enough to make the other sock sort of the same, not identical, but similar. So they are the things that I have been working on really. The shawl knitting has taken a lot of my knitting time. First this shawl and then the veranda shawl that I am working on now. So now that I have shown you those two skeins of sock yarn, I might show you some other things that I got when I was in Sweden. I did go back and get another colorway of the same sock yarn and it's still in, this is how they are in the supermarket in a little plastic bag. So I got one other colorway that I quite liked. So I got that. I did go to my local yarn shop in my hometown and they had lots of nice things. They have a lot of the sock yarn, a lot of um, regia, and also a lot of, um, I think it's Yerbu, a Swedish or well, it's a Scandinavian brand. I can't remember exactly where it's from. They have a lot of that. But I thought I, I did buy some in July when I was in Sweden last, and I still have not used it. So I 
I did not buy anything, but I had a good time having a look and seeing what was available there. And then I went to um, the local Red Cross op shop and in the little corner of the um, tablecloths and fabric and thing, I found a, a small basket with some yarn in it and I had a look and there were two different types of wool there, both undyed. One of them I thought was just too good to leave there. Actually, I did leave it the first time, but I did come back to get it. And um, that was eight skeins of this. I think it's, it's quite vintage. It's called Hapu. And it's from um, Jakobstal Kamgarn Spinnery in Gothenburg. I've never seen this before. I don't know if it's still available. I don't even know if... It says made in Sweden, so I'm guessing they don't do that anymore. I should have looked it up before recording, but I didn't. But these, um, they are 136 meters and 100 grams. So it's, it's quite a thick one. So I have eight skeins, so I should be able to make a jumper or something for myself. I love that they're undyed because I can dye them. I know it would be nice for Aaron or something, but um, I think I'll dye them. And um, I paid 15 Swedish crowns um, for each of these, which I imagine is a really good deal. And it was um, actually more what I wanted than anything that I found in the actual local yarn shop. So yes, I was very happy to find that. And um, I'll have to have a think about um, what colorway I will dye them in. I think it will be for me. I don't think I'll make anything for the girls because it's it's not the softest. But yeah, I like the tag. Harpoon. It says the, the yarn that can take most things. So it's meant to be a hardy one, I guess. <laughs> okay, so that was the only thing I got. Um, but that's fine because I have plenty in my stash. And I guess that means we can talk about stash dash. Okay, so I thought I'll, I'll just talk briefly about my stash dash plans for this year. Stash dash, for you who do not know, is an event um, hosted by the Knit Girls, which um, is a podcast on YouTube. And um, they, I think this is the third or fourth year. I did attend or participate last year and three years ago, I think. So with Stash Dash you can choose um, to try to knit or crochet a certain distance of yarn. So you just, they have um, 3K, 5K, 10K and 15K, I think, and 7K, I think. And the 15K is a new one for this year. So from, I think today it starts actually, 27th of May, until I think 21st of August, um, everything you finish, all the yardage that you've put into the projects that you finish will go towards your stash dash final count. And um, last year I went for the 3K and I did succeed. Um, that goal. I was traveling a lot of the time during Stash Dash last year so I did not sort of push myself too much. I had a look because what I do is that I, I tag the projects that I'm working on for the Stash Dash, uh, Stash Dash. I tag them with Stash Dash 2015 or 2016 this year. So last year I could go into Ravelry and, and easily see that I had worked on 11 projects I think and I ended up with about 3.8k, I think. So I've done the same for this year. So all the projects that I have currently on the needles, uh, which are seven projects, I've tagged them all stash dash 2016 and I made a special tab for them. And I can see that if I use all the yarn or most of the yarns um, for those projects, I will end up having four and over 4k 
So I thought that um, I should, I mean, those projects include my praline cardigan, which is quite a fine knit project that's taking a lot, long, long time. And um, so just doing those seven projects and finishing them is, is already quite a bit, I think, but I thought I'm not going anywhere. It's May till August is quite a long time. So I think I can add some things to that and go for the 5K. But you don't have to decide from the beginning how many Ks you're going for, as long as you don't post in the thread for each of the different um, distances. If you don't post until you know, it's fine. So you can post the last day of the stash dash, really, when you know exactly how many Ks you did and you just go for, for that distance. Um, but I think, yes, I won't post anything yet, but my aim is to go for the 5k so we'll see how I go with that so if you haven't joined it before you haven't heard about it um, check it out it's, it's a really good way to motivate yourself and finish things that are on the needles last year I finished a um, mitred square blanket that I had had on the needles for a very long time and um, I think I was almost down to like nothing on my needles when Stash Dash was finished, and that was really great. Now I'm up to seven things on the needles again, which is um, probably the most I've had on the needles since Stash Dash last year. So it's time to um, get those things out of the way and um, be able to start fresh on new things. Okay, so that's Stash Dash. Lastly, I'll just... Um, maybe sort of talk about what's coming up next. While I was away, I found out that I was offered a contract where I work at the moment, in the lab where I work. So from July, I'll be working. I haven't signed anything yet, I, I'm, so it's not 100% certain, and I don't know the exact details. But now I've been working on a casual basis two to three times, or two to three days most weeks. But now it will be definitely three full days a week. And um, the bookkeeping job that I have been doing from home will definitely not slow down. It would, well, I think it might even be more work coming up. So I'll, I'll be quite busy, which is, it's a good thing. It's, it's really good. Um, I'm really um, happy when people want me to work for them, so that's great. It will mean that I will I'll be quite busy, just um, working, being a mum, looking after the house and just everyday things. So being away and having all that time, not having the Etsy shop open, not doing any dyeing, uh, not doing any housework really and not doing any work in the lab. I had just a lot of time relax relaxing, which was great. But it also made me think that I need to organize my time here at home better. And um, starting with a contract and like just knowing more what my work will be like every week, I will have to come up with a a schedule for everything else I think so I have not decided yet what the schedule will be or how I will manage my time really I'm thinking about it and I might have to just sort of try different things and see where I end up but with the yarn dyeing in the Etsy shop I'm now sort of thinking that maybe I will have one big dye day a week maybe two depending on what the weather is like and what's going on but I'll just sort of concentrate all of that to the one big day of dying and then also just have fewer updates and do a couple of months a month or something like that but I'm not sure it's now to me it sounds like that's a good way to do it because it will mean that I will not have to think about it too much in between those sort of days of focusing on 
on the dying. But up to now, I've sort of, I've just grabbed opportunities here and there during the week to do a bit of dyeing and take photos and all the things, which has worked well. But it also does mean that I never really get any um, time off because I use that time for the dyeing and other things, which is what I want to do. It's something that I enjoy, but I'm, I, I'm thinking I need to try it um, this other way and just make sure that I have downtime and um, have enough time with the family and everything like that. And I, I think I'll just be more tired having this um, um, job on the contract because it will mean a little bit more responsibility and me um, using more of my brain capacity. I guess. So that's what I'm thinking about what's going to happen next, but um, we'll just have to see. I have no determined plans or anything. We'll just see. I'll have to think about it. Um, today, I just wanted to tell you that I'm back. Sort of, uh, I'm, I'm here, but my brain and everything might still be in transit. But um, yes, I've shown you my knitting. I've told you what's going on and um, we had a lovely time in Sweden. There will probably be some photos um, at least at the end of this episode if you want to see what it was like and um, I think that's all. I'll check my show notes. Yeah, I just want to keep this podcast nice and relaxed and something that's just um, easy for me to do. It's a way for me to talk about my craft and catch up with my friends so we'll just I think keep it like that and keep it um, relaxed and casual so it's almost time for school pickup so I'll, I better go I better finish this off um, I'm happy to be back I'm happy to see you all again and um, I hope you've had um, some great weeks and I'll, um, I'll see you next time. So take care everyone and um, don't be a stranger on Instagram or Ravelry um, and uh, just be in contact if you have anything you'd like to know, anything you want to tell me, it's fine. Just I'm always really happy to receive any sort of messages or um, comments. So take care again and I'll see you next time. Bye.